Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of the Young Grown Ups Video Transmission. I'm your host Mark and today we're going to be taking a look at the Walking Dead Series 3 action figures from McFarland Toys. We have Michonne, we have Michonne's Pet 1 and 2 and Merle. Now this uh, this collection of figures is actually, there's a, actually a fifth figure, it's a, it's a walking zombie. I think they call him the uh, autopsy zombie which is the uh, the zombie that was, um, that Rick had to like cut the stomach open and, uh, and look for uh, what it had been eating. I don't want to go too far into it if people haven't seen that episode way back in season two, so I don't want to spoil it. But um, I, I saw that figure and I was just like, mm, you know, I could pass on that. I don't, I don't need another, just another zombie. Um, you know, who knows, I may end up getting that guy down the road, but for right now, I just wanted to pick up these four and uh, and take a closer look at them. Um, so as you can see, we have them all set out here. Um, like I said, I didn't pick up the other zombie. You can see him uh, here on the bottom, the autopsy zombie. And uh, I, I'm not going to go too far into the back of these packages because they all look the same. Um, all, all of them look the same. So uh, you can see Merle down there on the bottom, Michonne. And uh, sort of the, the special features where each one of the uh, the pet zombies have their arms and bottom jaw that you can reattach, which is kind of kind of cool. Um, the front of the package features, you know, it's really clear to see um, pretty much everything in there that you're going to be getting. Um, they actually came with bases this time, which is amazing. Thank you, uh, McCarlin Toys, for that. Uh, and you can see a little picture of the a little rendering of the uh, of the figure getting down there at the bottom. So. Pretty cool. Um, as you can tell, these are the slim packages because I did find these at my local GameStop. I had to go to two different ones um, to get them all. Uh, and so that means that we'll probably be seeing these in the larger, um, more horizontal packages whenever they hit local Toys R Us's. So, um, so yeah, that's about it. Let's get these guys opened up and check each one out. Okay, so here we have Michonne opened up and out of her package. And I got to tell you, that just in the few minutes that I've been playing with her once I got her out of the package, this is one of the best figures McFarlane has ever made. Now, you guys know from my, my past reviews, I, I can't stand the ratchet joints that McFarlane is using on the on the elbows and the wrist, um, especially since there's far more elegant and more functional, um, you know, uh, you know, executions of joints that McFarlane could be employing, um, but that being said, this figure is awesome. The sculpting is top notch. The uh, the paint apps are amazing, and I I gotta tell you, I'm really impressed. She does have a little bit of a hard time standing up. Um, her shoes are pretty big, so that does help a little bit. Um, but uh, but yeah, so as you can see, she she you know it's fifty fifty. Um, I love the detailing here on the. Uh, sorry, I'm just skipping right ahead to some of the details, but I love the detail on her on her boots. Uh, you can see like right there on her pants. Sorry if this will focus. Um, it's where her pants are unzipped on the side, and one boot is up, and the other boot is down. <laughs> it's awesome, awesome uh, detailing. Um, so yeah, Michonne is top notch. I wanted to start with her because I knew she was gonna be my favorite from this uh, from this release. Now you can remove this uh, the whole hoodie. It's just a very soft plastic. You just have to be careful removing uh, it from around her uh, from her braids, and then this just sort of lifts right off. Sorry, I'm just trying to do this with one hand. It's not the not the easiest. Um, but yeah, that just comes right off, and um, we'll look at that real close. So as you can see, it's a it's a really soft plastic. It's off of one shoulder, but it's got a very nice texture to it. It does look, you know, adequately weathered and dirty. And I like how it's folded over on one shoulder. That's pretty cool. Um, as you can see, there is some awesome detailing on the shown. Uh, you can see her necklace deep down in there. Unzipped jacket. The color. Very nice, and you can see where her belly button is. That's awesome. The belt, look at that. That is just amazing detail in there, and uh, up on her face. Let's see if I can hold it closer to the light. Let me turn this around a little bit. Um, you can see the detailing, the stitching and beadwork that's done on her, on her headband. That's amazing. I don't, I don't think this color is coming across well enough that close up, but. The face sculpt is spot on. 
to the character. Very adequate pissed off look on Michonne's face. Quite, quite nice. This is a top figure. This could be like the standout figure. Uh, not Maybe not even in just this wave, but, but maybe in the line entire. Um, you know, for me, I, I think the coolest figure from wave one was definitely... Daryl, but geez, he, he, his face sculpt and, and body proportions and just overall sculpting was so horrible. Um, and you guys know I had him because he's shown up in several reviews, but um, I saw how much he was going for on eBay and I sold him. I actually sold my Daryl Dixon figure for 170 bucks on eBay. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's exactly what he went for. I put him up for auction and he went for 170 So I was like, that is an ugly figure. He is my favorite character, but that is an ugly figure. If I can get 170 for him, I definitely am. So let's look at um, her articulation. I'm going to get this sort of, get her sword strap and uh, samurai sword. Sorry to have to do this off camera. Get that out of her uh, out of her hands. And just so you can see the, uh, the sword, it's kind of tight, but it does fit down in the sheath. But um, you can see... It's kind of tight to get it in and out, so it's a it's a tight fit, no doubt. And of course, that just slings over her shoulder. But you've got, you know, head looks like it can go all the way around, up, down. You've got your standard articulation. Hands can go in and out. You get a nice range of motion. What I'm really impressed with on this figure is you do have like an ab ball joint, which looks to be right there that's really nice um, no other than that you don't get anything at the waist you get the upper torso but the um, the upper leg is on a ball joint which is really nice nice range of motion ratchet and swivel at the knee and ratchet and swivel at the ankle so some really really nice articulation with this figure which you'd expect because Michonne needs to be in, in some nice poses and I can't wait to get her pets opened up and positioned with her. Michonne is hands down the standout figure from this line. And I ain't even opened the rest of the figures yet. Um, like I said, not even in this wave, but in the line entire. This is going to be a standout figure. If only we got a Daryl Dixon figure that was crafted as well as Michonne. So let's, uh, let's get her zombie pets open, take a look at them, and, uh, and see what they look like uh, with uh, Michonne leading them through the woods. Okay, so here we have Michonne's pet number one, and um, because I'll probably never display him with the arms and the jaw in, um, I wanted to go ahead and, and show you the way he looks when he's all sort of like pieced together. Um, you can see that this is a, um, a real metal chain um, that they included, which is really, really nice. And, um, sorry, I'm just trying to get this to focus. Um, so it is a real metal chain, um, so I'm glad they included that. There's no handle in, on the end, it's just a... Um, a, you know, just a standard chain. Um, you can see the clasp where the ring goes, where it connects, but this doesn't disconnect in any way. You just pop the head off and slide this off of his neck um, um, for that to, to for that to work. Um, also, you'll see they included a base, which is awesome, but this guy actually kind of stands up on his own pretty well, so that base will probably be used for Shane from Series 2 because that guy will not stand up no matter what you do. Um, here's his backpack. Um, so, um, it, I don't know if you can, you know, I'll try to make this focus so you can see, um, there, this doesn't come apart in any way. Um, these are all, you know, this is all one piece and it is a, you know, a semi-rigid plastic. Um, it's pretty rigid up top. It's got a little give here on the bottom. So I'm hoping what, what you can do is you're able to get his shoulders underneath here, up in here, um, and stick his neck through and it worked just fine. I haven't tried to put this on yet, but, um... But I'm going to here in a second. So this doesn't come apart in any way. So I'm really curious about how how well this is going to, how easily this is going to go on. But I can't wait to try because that's going to look amazing. So I just wanted to show you this guy real quick. Um, he does have um, some articulation, but it is really limited. Um, I can't really help you as far as I like, give you instructions on how to get that bottom jaw on. If you can see like right, well, I have to get him over here in a light so you can see. Um, if you can see right there on top, there is some detail that looks like a tongue and some teeth. 
um, so you can sort of see which way is up. But that little piece is so tiny and so discolored and disfigured, it's hard to tell which way is up. But you can kind of see that tongue hanging out. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm pretty confident that that's the correct way. But as far as like getting it in, uh, there's no right way or wrong way. I don't, I don't think. Um, he, he's pretty. It's pretty tough to get it in there. It, uh, quite a bit of fiddling to, to sort of get that thing in there and stay. So, um, it kind of is what it is. Now, because of the way his shoulders are, and there's no articulation in his shoulders, this is the only range of motion you can really get. Um, with his arms. Um, his head is on a ball joint and it just pops right on and off so he can go 360 degrees. You do, um, you can get full range of motion out of the swivel where his arm, where it disconnects. Um, you do have a um, joint at the elbow and his wrists do rotate all the way. Um, and this one, yeah, they don't have like an up and down joint. They just have like a, so you can put the arms completely down Oh, he does have a um, um, joint right here at the at the waist, and both legs have have a uh, have a cut joint in them, so you can get a little range of motion. So you can sort of position him in a way to where he'll stand up pretty easily on his own. But for the most part, you know, we're going to be displaying him without the bottom jaw and without his arms. So that's about how he's going to stomp about. So. Let's uh, get his head popped off, get the backpack on, and get the chain on and show you what it looks like when he's being uh, led around by Michonne. Okay, here he is um, with his backpack on and the chain on. And I can tell you it's uh, a pretty tight fit um, getting this thing on. So you do have to pop the head off, but you have to do that anyway to put the chain on. And what I found was it was easier for Pet One to sort of put this shoulder in, then the neck, and then get to this side to come off of his right shoulder um, and have the right shoulder be the last one to sort of go in. I found that to be the easiest, um, uh, but it is, it is a really tight fit. Um, but as you can see, and he can lift his head up a little bit, man, he's got some great detailing. I didn't get, a, I didn't get too close on his face, but he has got some really nice detailing. See the eyes and the pupils? very very well just like you can see on Michon and you'll see with Merle he's quite detailed as well um, the the one thing with these figures that I would have liked with these pet figures is I would have liked some um, articu uh, articulation in the ankle um, I, I think that would have helped a lot um, with posing and standing um, I think they sort of copped out by just you know throwing a stand in there and letting that be the reason uh, sort of like be the solution but um, as you can see he stands up pretty well on his own so I doubt that I'm actually going to use um, this stand any when displaying them because he stands up very well on his own so uh, let's get this guy out of here and take a look at pet number two okay so here we have Michonne's pet number two and um, this guy stands you know you can no noticeably more upright um, than pet number one he does come with the same base um, same chain comes with a slightly different backpack which is really nice got some nice detail on it we'll look at that in a second he also comes with a rifle and I believe this may mark the very first time uh, in this line uh, in the three series of figures that we've gotten where a zombie actually comes with a rifle or some sort of firearm and this is actually really nice because if I had one gripe about Michonne oh I still got some tape on there if I had one gripe about Michonne is that she didn't come with like a pistol or some sort of gun but because um, this guy comes with the, uh, a rifle that actually fits down in his backpack, and I'll show you how that works in a second, then um, then that kind of solves it. But um, he looks far more um, menacing than the uh, the Crouch Dever Zombie Pet 1 um, when he has his arms on, and, um, and you'll notice that this mouth was a lot easier to get on um, than the Pet pet one and actually pet yeah and, and actually it looks a lot better it looks a lot more um integrated into the figure um here let me see if i can if i can get some more light over here that didn't help much but um it looks a, a lot better uh integrated into the figure um like from the side it actually looks like it was made on but it does detach and come right off um so same articulation you've got you know ball joint head um, you got a swivel here, and there goes the mouth. Um, you know, you can swivel right there at the cut uh, joint, and then you've got a swivel on the on the on the wrist. Um, 
at the waist, and each leg has a rotation, um, a little cut joint right there. So, but we all know this is not how this guy's going to be displayed. So, so we'll get back to him in just a second. This, this is like your standard um, pump shotgun. Uh, I don't know how well Michonne would look wielding this. I got an extra pistol around here somewhere. I think that's probably what she's gonna, what she'll be using along with her sword. And then you've got this dual, you know, both backpack and um, duffel that looks like it's being held together with a bungee. You can see the straps right there. And what does that say on the side of her? Oh, it says Sheriff. Ah, I wonder if she uh, made her way through. I wonder if she made her way through Atlanta and found Rick's old sheriff bag full of weapons. Wouldn't wouldn't that be awesome? And I believe that this gun can fit down in there like that. So that's really really cool. That they've made that little slit in there, and it only seems to go in this way. It doesn't seem to. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it'll. Uh, I guess you yeah. You could get it in that way, too. So you could put it in there however you want. It just seems to slide in a lot better that way. So that's really nice. So let's get this guy, let's get his arms off and uh, and check him out as how he's going to be being led through the woods by Michonne. Okay, so everything is much easier on pet number two. His backpack goes on easier. His jaw goes on easier. His head comes on and off a lot easier. The problem is, is he... It's almost impossible. He will not stand up on his own just because this he, he's kind of leaning back, as you can see, in this position. He's real tall and lanky, and he's sort of, his back is arched backwards, and with that heavy backpack on, he just tumps right over. Uh, I'm sure you could you could futz with it and, you know, finally figure out a way to get him to, to, uh, to stand up without it, but uh, for the most part, this guy does not stand up on his own. So while everything is easier with him, uh, definitely not standing. Um, and, you know, just for those who want to know, you cannot mix and match the parts between Pet 1 and Pet 2. I'm sure you could swap their heads if you wanted to, and because they do have different head sculpts, they look completely different. No, not all zombies look the same. And, um, and, uh, but, but the arms will not fit because the holes are different sizes on the shoulders and the pegs are different sizes on the arms. So I tried mixing and matching and that doesn't work. So let's bring him in next to uh, Pet 1. So here we have Pet 1, Pet 2, Thing 1, Thing 2, kind of knocking about. And uh, let's bring in Michonne. And uh, I don't think I'll be able to put the chains in her hands right now but let's see but uh here let me just pause the video and do that because that's going to look pretty cool Ooh, it is a nice setup right there that is exactly how this is going to go on my shelf well probably uh, along with her her sword sort of like draped over her shoulder so not complete but man that is pretty tough right there these guys are just top notch. I am so happy, so happy that um that I was able to track down these figures all at once and not have to not have to wait to sort of complete this triptych here. Um, now, for those of you who collect the other set of McFarlane Walking Dead figures from the comics, you'll know Michonne was in um, Wave One, and they are about to release on uh, the second wave of those um, comic series figures that is going to have both of her uh, pets in wave two um, of the uh, the comic series along with the governor and the governor's daughter and the governor's daughter actually comes with a fish tank with a bunch of zombie parts and they seem like random zombie parts just a bunch of arms and hands and such but those parts that the governor's daughter comes with in the fish tank they actually belong to the pets that you can get. So um, you can do the same thing with Wave 2 comic series um, Michonne pets, is that, that you'll have to buy the governor's daughter. And I believe that Wave is governor, governor's daughter, both zombie pets, and I believe Glenn in riot gear, I believe. Uh, so um, I've kind of sold off all of my um, comic series figures. Um, 
I'm I'm far more into the TV show than I ever was the comic. Um, I do own all the issues of the comic up until about issue 100 or so. So um, I'm familiar with the comic. I like I loved it. It was great, but I just I enjoy the show much more. So I sold off my um, my McFarlane comic series figures, and I'm only going to focus on the, um, the 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 TV show series. So let's get these guys out of the way and take a look at Merle Dixon, the guy we all love to hate. Okay, so here we have Merle Dixon, the, uh, <laughs> the everybody's favorite character to love to hate. Um, you can see he comes with um, his, is this an M4? If I'm M5? I don't know. That's incorrect. Please, somebody correct me down in the comments. Um, so you can see very, very weathered, beaten. Uh, he's got the shoulder strap, which will come in handy, considering uh, little Merle there. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he's ever referred to his, um, his nub hand as, uh, his stub as, a uh, little Merle on the show, but I was listening to an interview one time with Michael Rooker, who plays him, and, uh, and he, he refers to it in the interview heavily as, uh, little Earl, little Merle, so I just thought that was kind of funny, um, so he does have, um, you know, his pistol here, and it does fit right over here inside his, um, holster that's on his waist, I really like how it's, uh, up on his belt, um, and sort of, hair on it uh, and his shirt's kind of pulled out of the way for it that's that's really cool he also comes with an extra knife that you can take out and he can hold in his hand and um, I thought for sure that that knife went right here um, in this little pouch right here on his leg but that's just like a clip pouch it doesn't actually go in there it actually fits um, right here you can see the sheath hanging down all this waist and it's quite difficult to get to you actually have to pull his shirt, which is not the loosest of material, out of the way for you to actually be able to get to. I don't even know if you can see it very well where the sheath is. So it's not the easiest, uh, easily easiest, easiestly accessible. It's not easily accessible. Let's say it like that. There we go. Um, I love the detailing on Little Merle. Um, looks really nice. Uh, let's see if we can get it to focus right there. The detailing is really nice. Um, I wish it was kind of blood splattered. That'd be kind of nice. Or um, I wish you could actually take this knife off. It just kind of if it plugged in, that would be awesome. Um, but as it is, it's just it's already a connected to it. And I don't know. I may I may slice that off. I may not keep. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of torn. Um, but um, some nice articulation with this guy as well, and um, really nice face sculpt. Uh, you know, I think they really captured. Uh, Michael Rooker, uh, I think he looks really, really good. That head sculpt is really nice. Um, I only wish I still had Daryl around um, <laughs> to uh, just play with this guy. But, you know, people are going to ask me, why did I get rid of Daryl when he's like one of the hardest, absolute hardest figures to find, and that's why he went for so much money on eBay. But, um, you know, to be honest about it, my gut feeling is that, you know, McFarlane typically stop, stops doing action figure lines after a couple of waves um, cause I've collected McFarlane toys for long enough to know that he doesn't do waves for a really long time. If it's not sports figures or spawn figures, he sort of trails off after a couple of series. But, um, this line has kept going. This is series three. Series four has already been unveiled. Um, and you know, there's a speculative series five out there on the internet somewhere. So this wave is going to continue. And, um, you know, Daryl is the single most popular character on the show next to Michonne. So, um, you know, and next to Merle. So, I honestly believe we're going to get another Daryl. I really believe that. I, I don't believe... I, I, I think that McFarlane Toys knows that that first figure, figure they put out was shit. I think they know that. And um, I think they're going to give us a better Daryl. So, before that other Daryl came out, I wanted to make sure I got rid of mine while the price was really high. Um, where I could take advantage of it, um, and um, he was a horrible figure, I, I hate to say it, but he looked terrible, you can only put him in one pose, but anyway, enough about Daryl, uh, I, man, I can't really say enough about this guy, Merle looks great, he looks really, really good, you can see all of his standard um, um, articulation, he's got a ball joint here on the top of each hip, uh, his feet are, um, um, have uh, some articulation in them, they have an a up and down joint, which is really nice, um, this figure just looks great. I really want to get him kitted out with this, uh, I want to get his, um, sort of 
Oh, and now his knife is stuck to my hand. Great. I want to get his uh, knife in his sheath, and I really want to get this uh, up in his hand. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so uh, so now we've got the um, the rifle in uh, in Merle's hand, and uh, I got to tell you, um, after trying my best to get the shirt out of the way to put the knife in the sheath, that sheath doesn't even hold the knife. <laughs> it's closed. It's made closed. So what I did is I just kind of stuck it in. You can see it's not it's not supposed to go there, but I just kind of stuck it in behind his uh, behind his um, pistol um, clip, or maybe that's the that's his rifle magazine. I think it's his rifle magazine um, clip pouch on his on his thigh. So, man, he looks pretty 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 tough there. Let's um, let's bring in the rest of our our figures here from um, from today's haul. I really like Michonne peeking out underneath that uh, that hoodie, although she'll probably she'll probably go without the hood on my on my shelf. So let's bring all these guys in there. So um, like I said, um, I picked up each one of these. Um, I picked up Merle at one GameStop and then had to go to a different one um, to pick up the rest of these figures. Uh, they were all twelve ninety nine at GameStop, which we know that means they're probably going to be about fourteen or fifteen ninety nine when they hit um, Toys R Us. So. Uh, Man, Wave 3 looks awesome, and I cannot wait, wait for Wave 4 um, and beyond. I'm just going to keep collecting this line because I like it so much. And so, um, But yeah, that's going to about do it for us. So um, hopefully you like this video. If so, please give us a, uh, you know, a like, comment, or subscribe. Um, be sure to check out ungrownups.com where you can catch our podcast, which is new every two weeks. Uh, you can either catch it there over at iTunes. And please join in the... Um, the conversation over at Ungrown Ups uh, Facebook page. That's just facebook.com slash ungrownups. And uh, that's going to do it for me in this review. So uh, until next time, peace.